Peace, this is Brother Ernie Panicoli. I'm a photographer, historian, griot, and an elder. The streets where I lived in Brooklyn were all filled with graffiti. And I'm not talking little, you know, names, star, or whatever. I'm talking about huge walls, murals. It bothered me that two days later you go back and it was written over or washed out. So I got a camera and I started taking pictures of that. And that was how I became a photographer. The brothers and sisters who were doing the graffiti introduced me to the b-boys who were doing the dancing, who introduced me to the DJs who were doing the beats, who introduced me to the MCs. The earliest pictures were of the Zulu nation. And the Zulu nation wore a lot of beads and rings and, you know, they were very Afrocentric. And um, some of the magazines started uh, focusing on the Afrocentric aspect and that opened up that world to me. A at that point, they had not discovered or, or realized what hip hop looked like and they were still dressing like disco. And at that time you had a merging of disco and hip hop and uh, a lot of different things and it hadn't really found its way. And I was one of the people who helped define the look of hip hop because I would take a picture it being a magazine and a week later all the kids were emulating that, that that look. In order to be hip hop, you had to look, sound and act and exhibit yourself as yourself. Slick Rick couldn't look like Run DMC. Run DMC couldn't look like Grandmaster Flash. Grandmaster Flash couldn't look like Keras One. Everybody had their own unique style. In the 90s, it started to look very much alike. And by the 2000s, you know, they had stores where you could go and buy a hip hop outfit. Also, the message was very distinct. That created a lot of awareness of the Afrocentric root of the music and of the condition that we live in in the United States, specifically in the inner cities in Bronx, in Chicago, in, in Brooklyn, in, in uh, Compton. And the music reflected where you were from very distinctly. A few years ago, I had to give an award to Ice-T at the H2O event. Roxanne and Shante introduced me before I gave the award to Ice-T. And she said, many of you know Brother Ernie. She said, I'll just put this out there flat. If Brother Ernie hasn't photographed you, then you're not hip hop. <laughs> In a few weeks, I turned 75, and uh, I just don't have the energy to be out there. Back then, I would take a picture, and two weeks later, it'd be in a magazine or a magazine cover or a newspaper or, you know, a video or whatever. Uh, now, if I go to a, a, a concert and take pictures, before I get home and look at the pictures, the pictures are already all over IG. So. I don't know how these uh, photographers make a living anymore. Wow. First, I love Biggie. We grew up eight blocks from each other. That night, I was walking down the street and somebody started beeping at me. It's jet black and it's freezing. And somebody's beeping at me from an SUV. And I was like, I'm from Brooklyn. You don't go over there. <laughs> so he yells out the window, it's freezing out. He said, man, you're going to freeze your, you know, water off out there. So I said, yeah, baby, what's up, what's up? And we started talking and Tupac had just been killed. And, you know, I couldn't talk to him without bringing it up. And I said, man, what, what was that all about? And he looked at me and he had so much pain in his eyes. And he said to me, he said, brother, that's all BS. We had no beef between us. Whatever it was, we could have worked out. And if we had got together, nobody could touch us. He said, listen, and he played his music and he had Tupac in his music. Before we leave, I'm gonna tell you that the lie that's been perpetrated that hip hop started in 73 or 74 is a lie. It's not a lie, it's a mistake. Hip hop has always been with us. It's a universal vibe. We had it through slavery, through colonization. We had it through every aspect of our reality as spiritual people, as native people, as you know, African people, and we all came from Africa. That same vibe that created the blues and soul and gospel is the same vibe that transcends everything. So when people say hip hop was born in 74, I said, no, man, it's an ancient vibe. 
respect that ancient vibe and realize that that vibe was given to you by your creator. And if you respect that vibe, then your music will be uplifted, your spirit will be uplifted, and your people will be uplifted. Peace and blessings in Black History Month.